I have dominion. Shall we lift our hands, our voice to heaven and give God quality thanks? You are privileged to be alive today in the land of the living and you are in the sanctuary, not in the mortuary. Let God hear your voice of thanksgiving. Lift up your voice and give him the praise. Father, thank you. I give you all the glory and praise for the privilege of life. Thank you for another privilege to appear before you to be blessed. Father, we say thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Please put those hands together for Jesus. And please give the Lord a shout of praise as you sit down. And please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to God's presence this beautiful Sunday morning in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning is a great privilege I have of God and his servant, our father, the resident pastor who is here with us spiritually. And I deeply want to appreciate him for this privilege to stand before you in this great altar to bring God's word this morning. And I know you shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Also, our pastorate for the privilege to go through the school of ministry under them. I appreciate every one of you in the name of Jesus. Please say with me, Thanksgiving is key to fulfillment of prophecy. Please say it like you mean it. Thanksgiving is key to fulfillment of prophecy. That's a prophetic focus for the month of December. And I know that this prophetic focus shall answer in somebody's life. In Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I have the privilege to bring to all the part 1A of our Sunday morning teaching. Understanding the power of thanksgiving. Part 1. In one minute, can we bow down our heads as we pray? Father, this morning again, send us your word. Transform every life. And we vow to return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I bring you all greetings from God's servant. Spoke with him yesterday and he sent his good way. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Understanding the power of thanksgiving. Understanding the power of thanksgiving. Understanding is vital to every spiritual engagement. That is to say the profit we are able to maximize for any engagement in our spiritual work with God is directly proportional to the degree of our understanding. It is understanding that makes us to, uh, to be astounding in everything that we do. That is why Proverbs chapter 13 verse 15, it said, Good understanding giveth favor. Good understanding, in other words, Good understanding brings out the profit in anything that we do. And understanding is having a working knowledge of a subject matter. That is, knowing the what, the how, and the purpose of a thing. When you understand what you are doing, the understanding will cause you to stand out. So this morning, we are out to understand the power, the virtues loaded in thanksgiving. My prayer for you this morning is that God will open your eyes of understanding. In the name of Jesus. You know, lack of understanding makes many people to be so familiar with spiritual mysteries. Mysteries that we do them good, but they get familiar with it because of lack of understanding. But for you this morning, your eyes of understanding shall be enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. Thanksgiving is a mystery. And it is loaded with power. Understanding the power of thanksgiving. So let's begin from the beginning this morning. What is thanksgiving? What is thanksgiving? I believe the Holy Spirit will help us for better understanding this morning. What is thanksgiving? Number one, thanksgiving is acknowledging God as the worker behind everything working in our lives. Everything is working because God is at work. Do I have somebody here this morning in whose life everything is working? Do I have a witness? Your family is working. Your business is working. Your, your system, the whole of your system is working. Your kidney is working. 
That is, your heartbeat is on. Your, your liver is working. Your legs are working. Your hands are working. Can I have you give the Lord a shout of praise? God is the one behind everything working in our lives. Everything is working. Onaga. Praise the Lord. So God is the worker behind everything working in our lives. If God goes on break, everything about you will break down. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. It is God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So for all his good deeds in our life, he is expecting us to appreciate him. He is expecting us to acknowledge his acts in our lives. So that is why thanksgiving is acknowledging God as the worker behind everything working. Can I hear your amen? Number two, what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is the due of God for all his goodness in our lives. And in this church, the due of God, Psalm 96 verse 8, Give unto him the glory that is due unto him. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 27. Withhold not good from whom it is due. Withhold it not. So God deserves our due. That is thanksgiving is his due. Papa speaking in a prophetic focus. He said God has done us well. He said thanksgiving is a debt we must pay. Is a debt we owe God, so it's a due. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. We are bound to give God thanks always. It is a debt, and that is what we are here to pay this money. Do I have a witness in the house? Number three, what is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is the service we render to God to maintain and sustain his services in our lives. Just like we have to pay credit in order to retain the services of service providers. You have to pay credit, recharge your phone. You have to pay NEPA bill through the, the recharge card in order to retain their services. In order to keep them on duty. So Thanksgiving is the service we render to God to keep him on duty in our lives. To sustain him on duty, we must continue to give him thanks. So, refusal to give God thanks is taking his glory. And he said, I am the Lord, my glory will I not share with any man. So, God will not share his glory with any man. So, when you refuse to give him thanks, you are simply taking his glory. Say with me, I will not take your glory, Lord. Ingratitude is competing with God. It is challenging God to a fight. Ingratitude. It is taking God for granted. And when you take God for grand, granted, the person will be downgraded. But that shall not be you in the name of Jesus. So, thanks, ingratitude is appearing as the one making things to happen. Appearing as the one making things to work in your life, in every area of your life. Herod tried it in Acts chapter 12, verse 22 to 23. They sang and they said, hey, this is the voice of a God. And he took the glory and he was downgraded. Another young man tried it in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21. They call him the rich young fool. He said, yes, my bum is filled. Oh, I have done the Luke chapter 12, verse 22. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. He said, oh, my bum is filled. I have done this. I have achieved. I have achieved so much this year. My soul rests. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. And he thought within himself. He thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will put down my bonds. I will build greater. And build there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, My soul, that has much good laid off for many years. Take thy ease. Eat and drink and be merry. You have achieved a lot this year. You have done this. You have done that. You have done that. But look at verse 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool. No one will be a fool here. 
this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Why? Because he took the glory of God to himself. He refused to acknowledge God as the one behind all he has been able to achieve. You shall not be a victim of ingratitude. I say you shall not be a victim of ingratitude. Until you thank God for what he did in the past, he is not interested in what you want him to do in the present. You look at that scripture, he said, he said in his heart. So ingratitude begins from the heart. When you focus always on what God has not done, you are ungrateful. When your focus is on, oh, he has not done this. It's always on what God has not done. Every time the devil reminds you of what God has not done, show him what God has done. Do I have somebody here who God has been good to this year? If there is any reason the devil wants to remind you, look at this one, it's still remaining. 2019 is running over. Show him the one God has done. And you will see joy and thanksgiving springing out of your heart. Can I hear a believing amen? Listen to me this morning. You may not be where you want to be this year, but certainly you are not where you used to be. And listen, thanksgiving is the vehicle that will take you to where God wants to be. Praise the Lord. We must learn to be grateful to God. That is why we are here. Thanksgiving must be done quickly and swiftly. Because delaying to thank God is a sin of disobedience. Delaying to thank God. Just like if you wait for someone that blessed you or sent you some money to call you and ask you, ah, have you received the alert? And you now say, hey, oh, 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 thank you. The thank you is late. When Thanksgiving is delayed, when it is late, it is stale. So quickly, we are here as a commission according to our father in the faith. He said, all through this month, we'll be giving God intense Thanksgiving. Intense Thanksgiving because he has done all things well. If I have a witness in the house, can you wave your hands to Jesus? He has done all things well for us, both as a church and as individuals. That is why we are dedicating the whole month to say, Father, we thank you. The next question we are going to answer is, why are we thanking God? Because if you don't know why you are thanking God, you may not be able to do it correctly. As a commission, why are we thanking God? We look at five points in this service. Number one, the continuous growth of this church is a proof of the hand of God of addition at work. And the glory must go to him. If we must continue to experience addition, the continuous growth of this church, we are not the only church in town. But look at how God is exploding this church. This church has gone into the realm of flowing, multitude flowing into our services. So God of addition is behind the continuous growth. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. It is not preaching that brings people to church. No, it is not the edifice, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord, who did? And the Lord added to the church daily such as you be saved. In the office, we see people come to church and be added to this church even when it is not service day. Pastor, I just want to surrender my life to Christ. The Lord keep adding to his church by himself. So no pastor will take his glory in his place. That is why we are out to say, Father, for the continuous growth of this church, it is not because we are doing programs. No, it is not because of welfare. It is because God is adding to his church. For the continuous growth of this church, can we wave our hands to him and say, Father, we thank you. Thank you. In the precious name of Jesus. Number two, why are we thanking God as a commission? The sent word is behind all the healings and deliverances. We have recorded in this church's date. Therefore, the glory must be to the God that sent the word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. So you are seeing healing, instant healing, deliverances, all the testimonies we are recording. It is because God sent his word. During Shiloh, we saw blind eyes open. 
During the youth alive forum, somebody testified the ear was deaf. But suddenly, as the prophetic word was on, boom, the deaf ear popped open. Why? Because God sent the word. We saw the lame jacked up during Shiloh. It is the sent word that set those people. It is the sent word that transforms life. Job chapter 6, verse 25. How forcible are right words. It is not the grammar of the pastor. No, it is not the composition. It is the word that God is sending that is transforming lives in this place. Do I have a witness in the house? So that is why we are saying, Father, for your sent word, we return all the glory to you in the precious name of Jesus. Number three reason why we are out to thank God. All the dead raised back to life in our misty date are the workings of Jesus. Who quickens whosoever he will. And so, the glory must go to him and no other. Raising the dead. We have heard of so many dead jacked back to life. A woman took a dead child to church. And she sat at the gallery in one of our churches. And as the prophetic word came, the child that has been dead came back to life. You have heard this one. The person had an accident in Kogi. Kogi and they have then bombed him. The brother went there and said, Jesus Christ is here. He has been embalmed for several hours and the dead jack back to life. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. So for all the dead raised back to life that we have recorded as a commission, we are here to say, Father, we return the glory to you. Can I hear your believing? Amen. Number four, why are we giving God thanks? Number four, all the signs and wonders recorded in this commission to date are all about Jesus confirming the word in our midst. The resurrection and the life, raising the dead. He is confirming the word of his servant. So the glory must go to him and not to any man. Mark chapter 16 verse 20. God walking with them, confirming the word with signs, following. In Isaiah chapter 44 verse 26. He is the one that confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messenger. You hear people say, God's servant said, and I caught the word, and that was it. God's servant said, the sick was healed. Why? Because God is confirming the word of his servant in this place. So that is why we are here to say, Father, for confirmation of your word resulting in signs and wonders, we return all the glory to you in the name of Jesus. Number five reasons why we are here to give God thanks for diverse fulfillment of prophecies in our midst, both as a church and as individual. They are all about the hand of God at work, so the glory must go to Him. The glory must not be tampered with. No, all the prophecies, we have heard quite a lot of the prophecies that have been fulfilled in this commission and still fulfilled. First Kings chapter 8 verse 15 Solomon said What your mouth has spoken to my father David Your hand has performed it Only the hand of God Can perform that which God has spoken Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37 He said who is it that saith it And it come to pass When the Lord God has not commanded it So every prophetic word That has found fulfillment in this church And in your own life God is the one that made it come to pass and that is why no man must tamper with his glory. We just heard recently that God spoke to his servant that millions will soon gather. And at Shiloh 2019, we are all witness how the millions gathered physically and online multi-million. God is the doer. And we must return the glory to him in the name of Jesus. So for thanksgiving to be effective, we must learn to count our blessings one by one. We must learn to name them. Because when you thank God for where you are, nothing will stop you from getting to where God is taking you to. Can I hear your loud amen? Why must we continue to give God thanks? We have looked at what thanksgiving is. We looked at what are we thanking God for. Thirdly, we want to look at why must we continue to give God thanks. We must continue to give God thanks to preserve his blessings in our lives. To preserve his blessings both as a church and as individual. Please turn with me Malachi chapter 2 from verse 1. 
we must continue to give God thanks for his blessings upon our lives as individuals and as a church to be preserved because ingratitude corrupts the blessing. Malachi chapter 2 from verse 1. Now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. Verse 2. If you will not hear, say I hear. Please say with me, I hear. If you will not lay it to heart, say I lay it to heart. To give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. Somebody say, God forbid. And I will curse your blessings. Say, God forbid. So ingratitude turns blessings to a cause. But thanksgiving is a covenant preserver of blessings. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14. Whatsoever the Lord doeth, it shall be forever. So when you thank God for that which he has done, you preserve the present blessing, you preserve the blessing of the future, you preserve the blessing of the present, and you attract the blessing of the future. Thanksgiving preserves a blessing. So that is why we are here to thank God. When you give God thanks, the past blessing is secured. The present blessing is secured. And future blessings are attracted. First Samuel chapter 2. We saw how that Hannah came to God. And God blessed her with Samuel. And the next year she returned with that blessing. And began to celebrate God. First Samuel chapter 2. Verse 1 to verse 10. She began to celebrate God. She was rejoicing. Verse 21. And the Lord visited Hannah. Look at it from verse 1 to verse 10. She was rejoicing and celebrating God that has blessed her. Look at verse 5. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry see, so that the barren had born seven. And she that had many children is was feeble. Verse 8. He raised up the poor out of... She began to celebrate God. She was rejoicing and giving God thanks for giving her one child. Now look at verse 21. After she has given God thanks and the Lord visited Hannah, somebody shall be visited in this service. So that she conceived and bare what? Three sons and what? Two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Look at verse 26. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with what? Men. So as she gave God thanks, the first blessing somewhere was preserved. And she attracted five other children with her thanksgiving. Somebody will attract the remain of a dominion order of testimony with thanksgiving today. In the name of Jesus. So thanksgiving secures a blessing. That is why we are here to give God thanks. I discovered that God never gives us everything we need at once. He gave you one and he's expecting you to return and say thank you. When you give him thanks for the one he has done, just like the Hebrew says, Ekeleze nunkemere, what will happen? Omoza. So God, that is God's behavior. He gives you, takes you to so first step, he wants to see your reaction. When you return to thank him, he changes your position. When you return to give him thanks for the one he has done, he gives you another one. Somebody is returned with decorated blessing today from this service in the name of Jesus. Look at two characters here. Saul. God picked him from nothing. In fact, Samuel said to him, he said, when thou wast lit you in thy own sight, God picked you and made you a king. But he was an ingrate. He looked at the one that anointed him and sized him up and said, we are now mates disobeyed God and he lost the throne. But look at David, the same scenario. God picked David from the bush and brought him to the palace. In fact, the family forgot about him. But grace located him in the bush and brought him to limelight. And he recognized it. He carried the mentality of grace and he began to rejoice and dance. Who, 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 who know me? Who does mocking banana? That God has made me a king instead of your father, he said to Micah, the wife. He said, I will yet be vile. I will yet dance and give him thanks. I will yet celebrate him because I was a nobody. But today, 
I can never forget where I am coming from. So he was dancing and rejoicing and celebrating God as a king. Excuse me, do you know at that point where David was dancing, their wife Micah was still barren? Despite the barrenness, he was rejoicing and celebrating God for making him a king. And look at what happened. In the book of Psalm 89, verse 29, God vowed, because of your thanksgiving, because David was a dangerous thanksgiver, for everything he will come and say thank you. You go through the book of Psalm, you will see thanksgiving for deliverance, thanksgiving for uh, safety, thanksgiving for protection, thanksgiving for, he was always a thanksgiver, appreciating God for everything. And look at it, Psalm chapter 89, Psalms 89 verse 29. Psalms 89 verse 29, God voice said, His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Look at verse 36. Psalm 89 verse 36. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. So thanksgiving preserve the throne that he, today there is what we still call the throne of David. But so his name and his generation has been forgotten forever. You will not be forgotten. So thanksgiving, preserve the blessing. Because you have given me thanks, you have celebrated me, your throne will be sustained. Your throne will be preserved. If you are not thankful, you are not fruitful. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. If you are not thankful, you are not fruitful. Because thanksgiving is a seed in our heart that produces fruit in our mouth. It begins from the heart. It is a seed. When the seed is there, it will produce fruit from our mouth. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. Hebrews 13 verse 15, he said, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God. How many times? Continually. That is the fruit of our what? Our leaves. Giving thanks to his name. So when the seed of thanksgiving is in your heart, in gratitude, it will be manifesting in fruit from your mouth. Thanksgiving is a fruit. And look at Luke chapter 13 from verse 6. Luke chapter 13 verse 6. We saw how that Jesus was speaking. He said, Luke chapter, he spoke also a parable. A certain man had a fig tree. Luke chapter 13 verse 6. And had a fig tree planted in the vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Verse 7. Then he said unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it what? The ground. Why is he wasting time? I have invested into it. I have done everything I should do since January to December, but no single fruit of gratitude, no fruit of thanksgiving. Let's cut it off. And he said, let's give it another opportunity. God is giving you another opportunity to show gratitude to him. Your blessings will not be corrupted. He said, why cumbereth it the ground? Why is he wasting resources? Why is he just occupying space? Not giving me thanks. He's not producing fruit. So when you are not thankful to God, you are not fruitful. And when you are not fruitful, you are likely to be cut off. But that shall not be you in the precious name of Jesus. Say with me, I will bear fruit. I will bear fruit. Psalm 138 verse 1, the devil said, With the whole of my heart. Psalm 138 verse 1. With the whole of my heart, I will give him thanks. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. How do we express our thanksgiving to God? Number one, from the heart. It starts from the heart. And number two, with our mouth and our lips. With our mouth we sing praises to him. With our mouth we give him a shout. Can somebody give the Lord a shout of praise? So we express our gratitude to God with our mouth, with our lips. Number three, with our hands in clapping for him. Somebody here clapping for Jesus. That's an expression of gratitude. And we also lift our hands to him in thanksgiving. Wave your hands to him. Give him the praise from the depth of your heart. And number four, we express our gratitude to God in dance. Dance given. That is, the seed of gratitude in your heart manifests in dancing. You begin to, he has done for me. And you see yourself dancing even when there is no music. 
You know why? There is music producing from the heart. Another way we express it is by testimonies. Psalm 26, verse 7. When the seed of thanksgiving in your heart, it will manifest. You keep testifying before the hidden, before the church. From today, with this understanding, somebody will be fruitful. I say somebody will be fruitful. In the name of Jesus. Somebody here this morning with better understanding, ready to give God thanks. Jump on your feet and give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Say to Jesus, thank you. You have reasons to celebrate him. Lift up your voice and say, thank you, Jesus. Wave your hands to him, Lord, you have done all things well. To you alone be all the glory. To you alone be all the honor. You have not cheated me this year. You have not cheated my family. You have done all things well. I can't see what you have not done. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. Thank you and thank you, Master. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. It takes a humble heart to be, to be grateful. Only the humble can indeed be thankful. Psalm 69, 30 to 32. Now there was, a young, there was a woman in Luke chapter 7 verse 36. Look at Luke chapter 7 verse 36 to 48. She came to Jesus. In fact, they said her sins were many. And she came and she began to thank Jesus. Oh, despite my sin, I am a sinner. But you still gave me the privilege to come before you. You gave me the privilege of life. The Bible says she began to, with her tears, she was washing Jesus' feet. And she was using her hair to clean it. Look at it, Luke chapter 7. Studio verse 47. Let's look at verse 47. Luke chapter 7, verse 47. And behold, a woman in the city, she came which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisees' house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and began to anoint him, began to worship him, began to show gratitude to Jesus. Look at verse 38. Luke chapter 7 verse 38. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kiss his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Verse 39. Verse 39. And when the Pharisees that are bidding him saw and this woman were a prophet and would have known who and the manner of woman this woman is, verse 40. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, have somewhat say unto thee, and he said, say on. The next verse. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. Luke chapter 7. Now I read verse 49. Or verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are what? Forgiven. For she loved more, but to whom little you is forgiven, the same love little you. And she said unto her, Thy sins are what? Forgiven. In other words, she obtained forgiveness of sin with a heart of gratitude. She came before him even when she was not qualified. Somebody is returning this morning with forgiveness of sins. No matter what you have done since the year began, God wants to crown this year with you, with taking away all your sins, all your iniquities, and giving you a new beginning. All heads bow, all eyes closed. Lord, I am grateful for giving me life. But this morning, I want to surrender to you. I want to receive forgiveness from you. I am a sinner. I've been struggling with sin, but today, no more. I return to you with a heart of gratitude. Forgive me. You are here this morning. You want to return to Jesus. You want to receive forgiveness of sin. Raise your right hand to heaven. I want to pray for you. All your sins, no matter the number, they shall be forgiven. Raise that hand to heaven. Raise it high and pray this prayer of faith with me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me all my sins. And wash me clean with your blood. Come into my heart. And make me your child. From today, I'm now a child of God to serve the living God. Amen. You pray that prayer. Quickly run to the altar. Quickly come to the altar. Let me pray with you this morning. All your sins shall be rolled away. Just come quickly. Run to Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. That's one of the ways you show your gratitude to God for the gift of life. Run to the altar. Run to the altar. You know you are not the one keeping yourself. God has kept you for some day like this.
quickly come, run, 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 run down to the altar, quickly. Come to Jesus, you are grateful for the gift of life. Come, 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 come. Come to the altar quickly, run to Jesus, run to Jesus. Church, are we clapping for them? Are we clapping for them? Are we clapping for them? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I decree a new beginning for you. Please bow down your head. Leave that right hand to heaven. Lord, I decree your grace has found these ones. Let your grace preserve them. I cover every one of them with the blood of Jesus. I will welcome them into the beloved. Your destiny shall be fulfilled. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Please, you also know today is your first time in this church. You are worshipping in Living Faith Church, Winners Chapel Owere for the first time on a Sunday morning. You are our special guest. Please just come and join them. Carry your bag and your Bible. Everything you came to church with, carry it and come and join them. Please, quickly. You are worshipping with us for the first time. Please come quickly. Come, 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 come. We want to specially welcome you. Come quickly. You are worshipping with us here in Winners Chapel Owere for the first time. Come quickly. Come, 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 come. Oh,